What's up you guys, Bloody Jacob here to bring you another set of horror movie reviews. And this time we're going to be talking about three different ones. We're going to be talking about the original 1931 Universal Classic Frankenstein starring Boris Karloff. We're also going to be talking about a couple very different ones including Blood Knight, The Legend of Mary Hatchet featuring Danielle Harris and Bill Mosley, along with The Nanny from last year with uh, Jamie Murray and Nicholas Brendan. Jacob here, meeting my icon, Catherine Isabel here. Yeah, I don't plan on this QMR uh, going for too long. I'm thinking about 8 or 10 minutes. We'll see how that goes. It is kind of late right now. But I wanted to talk about these while I could. Oh, I had a window here for my full-time job and my fiance. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. Um, but yeah, uh, when we start off by talking about Frankenstein, I uh, not too long ago got a really nice, uh, actually Blu-ray steelbook copy of it. Um, very nice. Uh, found it at a good price at FYE. It's very cool. Um, so yeah, Frankenstein is a movie I hadn't actually fully watched in uh, quite a long time. I mean, I. I watched, of course, uh, much of it on TV when I was younger. Um, I remember uh, these orange books my, you know, elementary school library would uh, would have on some of the Universal monsters and everything. I, I would read those all the time. They're basically like information books, but they do like little write-ups on them too. Um, if I could pull the covers for those right now, I would. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, it was around Halloween time, and I, I just thought I had to watch, you know, like a truly, you know, classic, uh, you know, monster movie like that. You know, I've always uh, been keen on the Wolfman, uh, you know, Bela Lugosi's Dracula, I even want to revisit, uh, you know, Creature from the Black Lagoon and things like that. Um, but Frankenstein, I thought it was a good one to start that. And of course, you know, with any of these movies, though, it's going to be... Uh, you know, different watching them now. Obviously, it's dated. Obviously, the acting style is different. You know, maybe some of the effects and the sets and stuff like that. But there's still something you have to appreciate about these if you're a fan of the fan of them at all. Enjoy my dog in the background briefly there. Hey, Penny. Hey. Yeah, I need to pick up over there. <laughs> I think that's what she's saying. Um, but yeah, so. One thing you can't deny about this is that it has a certain ambiance about it. Has a has a tone. It has a you know like classical horror atmosphere that so many of those had back then that you don't really see now. Um, and I, I brought up the acting earlier. And I think again with most of these movies back then, there was just a different approach to acting in general for that time. Um, you can even see it, particularly in a scene, you know, with a, like Dracula and uh, Van Helsing in the Bela Lugosi Dracula movie, but also here during any scene with the, uh, you know, the doctor and, uh, you know, his uh, his teacher. Um, Colin Clive, I got I gotta say, as Henry Frankenstein, actually did a nice job. Um, he had like the right sort of broodingness for the, uh, you know, mad potentially mad scientist. I mean, he's describing his ideologies. He actually believe he believes it. Um, he just has the right look for it, the right delivery that I actually kind of liked a lot. Um, Mike Clark was fine as Elizabeth. Um, and, and you have to talk about Boris Karloff. Um, but before we do, that approach to acting, what I meant was, 
it, it was almost like thea you know very theatrical you know back then um they would basically do it as if they were in a play um you know kind of uh, booming their voices being a little bit over the top a little bit over dramatic um but that's just the way it was then and uh Knowing that, I think you you can also find another appreciation for that as well. I think a good approach to it would be to go into it like you're watching like a, a play or a performance, a Broadway show or something like that, you know? Um, I'm not knocking, I just think that's a style that I would most uh, tie it to. Um, I'm not sure you guys see it, but I think that actually makes sense. For me, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, Frankenstein is a classic, and you gotta... You gotta see it right when he, Boris Karloff makes his first appearance as the monster. It's absolutely iconic. You see the dead in his eyes, uh, his mannerisms, just the way he comes off as this monster. Uh, very, very good. Uh, unlike anything else again, it's influenced everything else after it throughout history um, with his performance there. Um, and you know, the movie is very short. A lot of movies like that were very short then. Um, you know, it was a. Uh, hour and ten minutes of that um, and uh, probably one of the best scenes in the movie is where he was walking through the woods and he comes upon this little girl you know in this touch of innocence but he doesn't know what to do um, but yeah and uh, the misunderstanding of the professor and uh, you know the mind that was actually put into him and the villagers reactions and such it just becomes a huge mess <laughs> um, and then you, got, you guys all know how it ends but uh, Frankenstein, a very good film. Um, you know, might not hold up for some these days. Some might not really get into it just because they don't understand or that they're not big enough fans to, uh, you know, warrant, you know, looking past some of the things for the, uh, you know, how old it is. But, yeah, I think it, everyone should watch movies like this one, so any genre fan. Uh, so, yeah, it's hard to rate Frankenstein. <laughs> um, I'd give it, like, an 8 out of 10 easy, you know, somewhere around there. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then next up, we're going to be going past 8 minutes. I'll try to make it closer to 10 if I can. Um, yeah, next up, switching major, major gears here, is going to be Blood Knight, A Legend of Mary Hatchet, which is about a group of teenagers celebrating the anniversary of the death of a local axe murderer suddenly find themselves face-to-face -face with the realities of this haunting urban legend. And the guy just broke him again. I need a new camera in general. Um, sorry about this, guys. And nope. <laughs> I'll try it like that. Um, but yeah, obviously the main reason for watching this movie is for uh, Danielle Harris. Um, but this is one of those slew of movies that she's actually not really in much of. Um, sort of like how Danny Trejo gets his name plastered everywhere, but he's in like five minutes. It's not quite that bad. <laughs> It's not quite as bad as uh, her role in something called, uh, you know, Camp Dread with Eric Roberts. Um, don't watch that if you're watching it for Danielle Harris. But, <laughs> um, she's not, she really doesn't have a lot of screen time in this movie, although she ends up being, you know, fairly key to the plot and the proceedings, I guess you could say. Um, most of it is revolved around this uh, random group of teenagers, and it's not very good. It, in fact, it's, you know, it's bad. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, there are some decent blood effects, but you don't give a shit about these teenagers. They're stereotypical, um, about as deep as uh, that. Um, they're dumb. <laughs> um, just about everything else, you know, it's, it's just not very well written. It's uh, There's some outright deaths, a uh, decent amount of, again, blood and violence to it. Um, Bill Mosley works as, like, this groundskeeper, you know, like... Uh, this guy, I forget what he does exactly, but like Gravekeeper, I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> um, you know, eccentric, you know, that voice he uses is a little bit fun. Um, and Daniel Harris is, she's fine. I, I mean, I, I'm actually going to finally be able to meet Daniel Harris next month at Days of the Dead in Chicago. Absolutely thrilled. But uh, let's just say this isn't the thing I'm going to be having her sign. <laughs> um, and I'm sure this wasn't her proudest work either, but. Um, there's a bit of a twist in the movie, and she does get to be a bit more hands-on, a little bit more involved in the movie, and it is, uh, enjoyable for that, you know, sort of climax of the movie, I guess, but it's, uh, it's pretty forgettable, and, uh, I won't really give this movie above, uh, 
6 out of 10, or like it'd be something if it wasn't for her. In fact, we'll remove Danielle Harris from it, and uh, I'd probably give the movie an F. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, I haven't done for a movie in a while, and I, I generally see myself as pretty easy. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not that hard to please. Um, I can enjoy things pretty, pretty quickly, but uh, this one, hmm. <laughs> I, I honestly uh, just tuned out for most of it, and I, I, I would you know, tune out for five minutes, I can go back, and oh, oh wait, yeah, I, 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 I still understand everything, that, that's about how much focus it took. <laughs> um, I, I did try, though, don't get me wrong, and it, it just was not very good. Um, so yeah, I'm giving it like a D or an F. D with Daniel Harris, uh, F without her. Um... And now we're going to be talking about the last, but I guess not least, <laughs> is going to be The Nanny, um, which again stars Jamie Murray and Nicholas Brendan, sort of. Um, it's about a young girl, Noah, who suspects her nanny isn't from this world. She fights to reveal the nanny's identity, which is more twisted than she imagined in this dark fantasy tale. And yeah, this is actually a movie I had been looking forward to seeing for some time. Um, the cover to the DVD is actually very cool. Um, it's actually, you know, it's actually pulled out a little bit so you can feel it. The texture of it's kind of nice. Um, I'm not sure if they have it on the Blu-ray copy or not, but it's got the DVD. Um, and the cover is probably the best thing about it, honestly. Um, the nanny. Uh, let me just say right off the bat, I absolutely love Jamie Murray. Um, yeah, I, I love Lila and Dexter. <laughs> um, you know, and, you know she, she's been in, uh, you know, things like, you know, Fright Night 2, uh, New Blood, which she is just exudes sex appeal in that movie, even though the movie's not very good, she is quite enjoyable in it. Um, you know, of course, Defiance, Spartacus, uh, she is just in the last season of the originals last year. Um, you know, I could go on and on. I think she's an incredible actress. Her presence and her, uh, way of, you know, delivering dialogue, I think is absolutely amazing. Um, she has a lot of depth as an actress, a lot of expression, um, but again, she is a very, very beautiful woman as well. Um, you know, she, she, you know, if I came up with a list of my favorite actresses, obviously Catherine as well is always number one, if you know me, but she'd probably be somewhere on that list of other nine people that would follow. Um, and then this, so this also features, uh, Nicholas Brendan in a role who played Xander on, uh, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And you guys know it's one of my all-time favorite shows now. Um, just did a video on the last season if you want to check that out, or any of the other ones. Um, this isn't a spoiler, but he basically plays the father of, a, of a boy who had gone missing under similar conditions before, or a child who had a fear if it was a boy or a girl. Um, but you don't see much from him. He's in the opening of the movie where you see that setup. And that opening is probably the best scene in the movie. It has a really good atmosphere to it. And uh, besides that, the opening and any dialogue-driven scene with Jamie and Murray are probably the best parts of the movie. The kids aren't too bad acting-wise in the movie either, and neither is the mom we follow um, in the present. But there should have been more Nicholas Brendan, and uh, they kind of screw up his role, I think. Um, the movie is very short, and that, that was actually a weakness as well. Uh, hour and 20, if that. Um, this, this movie just feels uh, kind of rushed by the end. I feel like it actually could have been two hours, maybe, hour 45, hour 50. Because there are ideas and some revelations they introduce in, like, the last quarter of the movie. It feels very rushed. The development doesn't feel like it's there. Um, there's a bit of a... There's something with the... I, I don't want to spoil it, but there's something involving, uh, the nanny character and what's, you know, the overall scope of what's going on. Um, they kind of play with your expectations a bit with her and just the overall, you know, perspective of it, but I wanted to get into it, but I, I, I just couldn't because it all just felt, okay, it, it felt like it just changed. You know, there wasn't really much of a transition, there really wasn't much of a build-up. It just sort of, I don't know, things just sort of happen, and then there's some, uh, very so-so, you know, CG effects in this movie as well. Um, and then the design for this other, uh, entity that's out of there that's connected to Jamie Murray's char nanny character. Um, the final design for it, when you actually see it full on, it's it looks like a Groot Halloween costume or something. Um, I don't know, less is more. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it's still worth seeing because Nicholas Brendan is pretty good in the movie too when he is there. Although they, I, I do think they screw up his role a bit. They kind of turn him into a stereotype by the end. 
Um, Jamie Murray is fantastic. I mean, again, just whenever she talks, you know, I'm hooked. Um, but, you know, again, anything with her character, I ended up feeling rushed as well, just the whole movie. Um, I'm giving it like a you know, C, I guess, just for uh, the quality of her performance and anything. And I uh, think Nicholas Brendan is good too, and the kids weren't too bad either. So it could have been so much more, you know. But yeah, let me guys thought about all of these, probably Frankenstein especially. You know, how do you see it now these days? Um, where does Blood Knight rank among your Danielle Harris favorites? I'm sure it's not anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.